Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. So in this video we are replacing the rear brake pads on the Range Rover Evoque. Stay tuned. So the rear brake pads, they're completely worn down and they're due to be replaced. So I think I'll bring you guys along. So this comes with the shims and obviously you get a complete rear set. <laughs> yeah and these are a lot bigger than what's in the car at the minute. Basically there's about two or three mil on one of them so they're definitely overdue. So let's get the car in the drive get the rear end jacked up, wheels off, go inside the car and we need to basically disengage the electronic rear brake. So we need to put the car into handbrake maintenance mode. So I think the way to do this is handbrake down and then accelerate it down and then start stop on off and it'll make a whining noise and once the whining stops Park brake in maintenance mode. Yeah, so they're pretty low. Gonna need some springs. Springs actually snapped. Oh, bloody hell. So, the calibre. Let's get this off. 30mm bolts, one here and one there. Then this should just pull off. 16mm to hold that in place. And then remove this bolt. like that Shims. So these are the pads. Pretty low, not too low to be fair. I thought they were much lower. Yeah, there's, there's a good cut mill left on them, but they're, they're getting there. The wear marks haven't came through yet. The squeal pads. Um, I do they have them. Got the MOT due in a few weeks, so definitely need to do it. Also, the rear coil spring is completely snapped. I don't know if you could pick that up on video, but it is completely sheared and it is pretty much an inch lower. <laughs> so, I have to pick up some of them also. But yeah, these are ready to go back in. These are for the trash. They are pasta. You can clean them up, but when you, got, when you buy good bricks, you get new ones. So we'll use these. Also new bolts. It's best to use new bolts. I have some thread lock on them already, so Let's just go straight in. Let's pull these out because these need a clean. These aren't too bad, to be fair. They're a bit grubby, but the grease is less than two year old because I put it in there. So just 
get the thick out. Like so. And some proper brick grease. Brake up, accelerate pedal all the way at the bottom, ignition off, back on. Can you hear that? There you go. So as you see, if we've got the warnings, show warnings, we have bonnet open, and that is it. Pump the pedal a few times, pedal is solid. I'll go and check the brake fluid reservoir and then start the engine and take it for a test drive. So just a bit of a recap. 
It's a 13mm socket or spanner that you will need to remove the two bolts off the caliper. Once you free them up, they will more than likely start rotating. A 16mm spanner, some pliers, anything basically just to grab hold of the actual pin itself to stop it from rotating. Once you get the bolts out, pull the whole entire caliper out, put it on top. You can tie it back if you wish or just balance it like I did on top of the hub and then remove your pads. Put in new plates, bottom and top. Make sure you use some brake grease and apply some grease to the top and bottom pads. So you've got your pads in place. The next step is to push the piston back. Now, if you have successfully put the brake, the rear brake, calibers in two minutes mode you can technically if you get a, a big enough set of pliers or a breaker bar you can push the piston back you don't have to rewind it it's a pushback piston but I just used a rewind tool and basically you just put this in the place where the pad would be as you see in the footage and tighten it up once it's snug just rotate the handle here and it'll just gradually push it back and so if this is on your disc and your disc is here as you can see there's actually some marks here where the caliper was sitting so make sure you put a blob of grease there and there and then on the pad which would be on the other side as you can see there's some marks that's off the actual piston make sure that's greased and quite simply slide the piston back on put in your brand new bolts which already have a loctite on torque them down and that is basically it go back inside the car take it out of maintenance mode and pump the brake pedal a few times once it's quite firm take it for a drive should be fine. I'm putting the rear caliper in maintenance mode. Quite simply, get in your car, put the ignition on, don't start the engine, don't put your clutch in, just ignition on, put it in neutral, and then you push the brake button down, you put your foot flat on the accelerator pedal, and then you turn the ignition on, off, and then leave it. Leave the finger on the brake and the foot on the gas, Lay them down until you hear the whining and the background noise stop. That is the piston full rewound and that is it. Do the work you need to do. When you're ready to put it back into normal operating mode, basically get in the car, ignition on, no engine, just ignition. Push down the accelerator pedal, but this time the brake button itself, pull it up, don't push it down, pull it up. And while holding that up and the accelerator pedal down, ignition on and the ignition back off, and you'll hear the, the, the whining sound again as the pistons come back out. Once that whining sound stops, it should sit out of maintenance mode on your dash, and then you should be good to go. The brake pads have been replaced. It's not a difficult job to do. I'm surprised how fast these have worn down. I did these almost two years ago, and I would have expected these to last a lot longer, because I don't really do many miles in this car. This car is probably only covered 18, maybe 20,000 mile tops since I changed these. So. Maybe it's because of Brembo pads, maybe they're quite soft and they're, they wear down fast in the standard pads, I'm not too sure, but I'll have to keep an eye on that because these don't actually have brake pad wear sensors. Maybe other models do, but my one doesn't. Normally there's a, is it a, like a groove here and there's a piece of metal and that'll actually start squealing on the disc and that will let you know. I'm assuming this shim, which it overlaps it slightly, if this gets worn down saying if, if, that, if this pad's as low as that then that is very low that's like half a mil so that can't be right there must be something inside these pads when you start when you maybe get a bit lower when you get to like say one or two mil there might be some lumps in there which appear and they start making a squealing noise or maybe they don't have anything to to warn you that your your pads are low with that, I think we're going to end this one here, guys. So hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Hopefully this has been educational. Hopefully it's, it's taught you something. Maybe you've watched one or two of these videos in the past and this one also combine them all together and it might actually give you a really good understanding of how to do this job and do it safely. That is the most important thing. Just make sure you take it step by step. Take your time. It's not a rush. Make sure they're in there properly. Make sure the brake pedal feels great. Take it for a test drive. Make sure it feels fine. Make sure it's braking fine. And yeah, hopefully this has saved you some money guys, hopefully it's taught you something. If it has then please do leave a like and a comment down below, that would be muchly appreciated. So like always guys, please do remember to like, comment and subscribe and I will catch you in the next one.